All right then gang, so there's one more quick topic I want to talk about in this series, and that's something called row level security. So by default, if anyone has that public API key that we used to connect to the Superbase backend, they can read and write to our database. And likewise, by using that API key on our website, any user can currently fetch the smoothies, create smoothies, update smoothies, and delete them as well. Because when our website is using that public key to connect to the database, it has access to everything by default. Now, that key is public, remember. So if you want to protect your data to restrict access to your database, you need to do so from the back end. And we do that by using something called row level security and policies. So row level security is a way of restricting database access at row level in tables and policies are essentially security rules that describe what access should be allowed at that level. If you've ever used Firebase and Firestore before, they're kind of the equivalent of Firestore rules where you can lock down different parts of your data. For example, I might write some policies for my smoothies table and those policies might say that anyone can read all rows from the table but only authenticated users who are logged in can create and update rows and then also maybe no one even authenticated users can delete rows from the table. Now, I don't want to get bogged down too much with authentication in this series or anything like that because this is a beginner series about the database mainly. So we'll be creating a couple of really simple policies, but in the future, I will be doing a whole series about Superbase authentication, and we're gonna dive a bit deeper into this topic then. To see how we can lock down data dependent on the user who is making that request and whether they're authenticated or not, right? But for now, let's head to the Smoothies database. And the first thing we need to do is enable row level security for this table. So find the Smoothies table and select it. And you'll notice in the top right corner that it says RLS is not enabled. So RLS stands for row level security. So at the minute, we don't have any security enabled for the table. And anyone with that public API key has read and write access. So click on that RLS button and then on the next page, you wanna enable RLS and then click on confirm in the pop-up. So now, row level security is enabled on our table. And by enabling this alone, we've basically just locked down our entire table because the default behavior of a table with RLS enabled is to prevent all kinds of access to the table, to anyone or anything making a request to it. Now, I can show you this by going back to the application and refreshing the page. And you'll see that now we can't see any smoothies because now we don't have access to them. But what I wanna do now is make some policies so that users can read all the data so that they can see all the smoothies on the homepage and also make some policies so that users can create new smoothies. But I wanna lock down the ability to delete smoothies so that if a user tries to do that, then it fails. And also the same for updating smoothies as well. I wanna protect the table from any kind of update request as well as a delete request. So to create a new policy, we click over here, new policy. And what I'm gonna do is just go to get started quickly because you can just basically select one of these and it's gonna generate a template for us. So what we wanna do is enable read access to everyone for our policy right here. So basically that allows anyone on the homepage to be able to see all of the different smoothies. So if I use this template, you can see on the next screen, we have a policy name already created for us. Select is highlighted over here because that's what we want people to be able to do, anyone. So anyone can select data or read it if you like from the table and then down here, we set that to true, meaning there's no kind of extra condition, it's just true for anyone. And this is the target roles, and it defaults to all roles if no one's selected, basically meaning anyone viewing the website, essentially in our case. So let's review that and then save the policy. And that means that now for the smoothies table, anyone can read the data. So now if I go over here and refresh, we should be able to get all of that data. And likewise, if I click on an edit, we should see we're able to fetch a single record as well. However, if I try to update this, then it's not gonna work. We're still seeing that error right here because we catch the error when it's returned to us. If I inspect and go to the console, it's gonna be a different error though, and it's this one right here. It just says, fail to load the resource. 
the server responded with the status of 404 and this array right here has nothing inside it. So it's not allowing us to do that. And the same is true if I try to delete something over here. It is being removed from the local state, but if I refresh, then we can see it comes back again. So although we're updating the local state at the minute, at uh, database level, we're kind of locking down that request, so it's not allowing us to do it, all right? So that's the first policy in place. The next thing I want to do is create a new policy over here, and I will go for full customization. So basically, it just starts you at this page, and then I'll just say, allow all users to create smoothies, that's what I'll call it, and then we will allow insert, so select that, Basically, just keep this as the default to all roles and make sure this is true, meaning basically anyone can create new data. If we scroll down here, we can review that and then save the policy. And now we have these two policies right here. If we go over here and try to create a new smoothie, hopefully we'll be able to do this. So let's just call it ABCD, anything for the method. And the rating is 10 out of 10, create the smoothie. It allows us to do that because we can see it right here. That's awesome. So if we try to update something, if I try to add an E on the end, it's not gonna allow us to do that. You can see right here, we get an error over here. And this is just a local error that we have in our React application. It's not the error coming back from Superbase. We could handle it a bit differently if we wanted to, but I don't wanna get bogged down with that. I just wanted to show you that we can lock down the data in our database using row level security and these policies. So it's not allowing us to update anything and it's not allowing us to delete anything, even though it gets deleted from the local state because we're just doing that locally. When we refresh, obviously we see that reappear. So we've not actually deleted it from the database. So then this was like an introduction to row level security and policies, and it only touches on the surface because when you make a real life web application, you'll probably wanna have a lot more granular control over your data access, such as analyzing authentication status, seeing who that user is, and restricting access based on those kinds of things. So because this was a beginner's course, I'm gonna leave it here for now, but I will be doing a more advanced Superbase authentication course in the future, which is gonna dive into this subject of RLS and policies a bit more. So stay tuned for that one. But hopefully now, my friends, you have a better understanding of what Superbase is, how you can connect to it from a front-end application, and how to make a database table and interact with that from your front-end to make a simple CRUD application.